I think India has more to gain or lose in Afghanistan. Yes. In order to to be a regional and global power to counter Pakistan, hmm. they need us. Unfortunately, that whole besides Taliban being in Afghanistan, there are tw- which were there earlier also twenty odd terrorist groups operating hmm. in Afghanistan. Hmm. So two reasons the U.S. needed Pakistan was for their campaign in Afghanistan. That yes. was a logistical route through Karachi, etc. Yes. Welcome back. It's great to see you all again. The following is a conversation with geopolitical analyst and Afghanistan expert Samir Basin. Samir has a lot of on ground experience in Afghanistan and in this conversation we discuss the overall scenario in Afghanistan, the history of the Afghan conflict, the relations between India and Afghanistan and a lot more. So enjoy the conversation and don't forget to like and subscribe. Samir Basinji, welcome to the Abhijit Chawla podcast. Your first time here. Great to have you here. Thank you very much. So today we will discuss Afghanistan. You are somebody who has extensive experience on the ground in Afghanistan, and hopefully through you will will give the audience a good overview of the the history of the conflict and where we are right now. So let's begin with the history. Afghanistan has I been mean, most people who live today, youngsters especially, they can only imagine an Afghanistan that's completely unstable, a nation that's been at war for such a long time. How did did it all begin? It began with the Soviet invasion, right? So in the recent past, uh, to put the context right, we can start with uh, the background of the uh, last four decades, mm-hmm. which started with the. Uh, with the uh, Soviet troops coming into Afghanistan and the resultant uh, uh, campaign uh, funded by the US mm-hmm. to basically, this was part of the Cold War uh, sin because we were at that time, there was, as you rightly said, it was Soviet Union and not Russia. Yes. So we are talking about Soviet Union at that time uh, and the Cold War was still in place. Mm-hmm. So in that context, uh, Americans naturally could not have Soviet Union coming in to beyond Central Asia uh, into Afghanistan and probably risking taking the risk of them going further. That's what they sort of imagined into the Middle East. Mm-hmm. So uh, we all know about uh, the Mujahideen and the campaign, which was uh, basically uh, uh, based out of Pakistan, mm-hmm. uh, predominantly out of Peshawar, mm-hmm. and uh, which was conducted against the Soviet Union. Uh, to liberate uh, the uh, Afghanistan from uh, Soviet Union, mm-hmm. because uh, two ideologies which was which was there, if you look at which the Americans uh, had geopolitically to counter communism, uh, as we know now, mm-hmm. uh, is uh, the ideology in that region, political ideology was religion, which was based on Islam. Yes, because these were the two. Uh, because these are not liberal, the Western model were not liberal state. They were ruled by uh, erstwhile kings, etc. Yes. And we know, because I will not go into that history of yeah. Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. But the political ideology there was uh, a communist or based on Islam, right? On Sharia. Mm-hmm. So the uh, Mujahideen fought against the Soviets based on the, they termed it as jihad. Jihad, okay. Okay, because Russians are atheists and uh, Afghans uh, and how they built that uh, momentum and the people to unite on that was based on uh, uh, liberating the country from atheists who are non-believers. Okay. And for a follower of Islam, uh, you know, uh, there is only one God, Allah, and mm-hmm. they follow Islam. So, it for the guy fighting, because the, you have to understand, Afghanistan was never a federally or a united country because of various reasons. Mm. It was a divided country around tribal lines and also the terrain of the country because it's mountains and so it is, you know, there was small, I mean, the various regions divided. So they were not completely united. Right. So this was the, uh, the term we call jihad was the, uh, the uniting factor against mm. the Russians uh, uh, armed and funded by we all know by the Americans. Yes. And the ISI played a logistical role naturally because they were next door mm-hmm. in in that campaign. Yes. And Zia Luck, as we know, was was in power then. Yes. And in order to uh, to go further, these all these madrasas and all were basically to indoctrinate and 
train fighters along religious lines madrasas were set up everywhere mm-hmm. to create uh, fighters to fight the so called jihad mm. against the soviets so were they recruiting from pakistan so from pakistan and from afghanistan from afghanistan so because you have to understand when mm. afghan when i said peshawar mm, peshawar yeah uh, during the russian campaign as we know there were refugees in india also yes so uh, refugees who could not afford to travel to the west or to to india, to india were went over to pakistan hmm. okay hmm. because also the russians had this mandatory thing of uh, drafting people into service in fact i had uh, people by the same last name my name hmm. in my school in dps arkaru who had who was studying here and from hindu families from afghanistan okay to hmm. escape drafting because they the, the russians had said that all young ch- Uh, uh, young youth hmm. have to compulsorily go and fight. Means get training as uh, like they do in Israel. Hmm. Conscription, get conscription, yes. and then they had and they had to fight against the Mujahideen. So okay, okay. So you know, so a lot of people who could escape and Afghans had escaped to Peshawar. So Peshawar became the uh, area from where most of these uh, the Fighters. leaders were selected. Okay, and organized and hmm. trained and. Uh, funded hmm. to fight into this thing so the madrasas are also in afghanistan and pakistan hmm. right so peshawar was peshawar if i'm not mistaken is mistaken is in khyber pakhtunkhwa is it yes right so that's the uh, pashtunistan region of pakistan right and so these mujahideen were mostly pashtuns were they so no they were mixed so oh, mixed? yeah mujahideen were mixed mm-hmm. uh, they were uh, tajiks pashtuns uh, azaras Okay, so they were all together. Yeah, yeah. I see. Taliban right. later came out of the Pashtun, some of the Pashtun elements of the Mujahid, erstwhile Mujahideen fighters. I see. So it all begins with a mix of ethnic yeah, groups. Yeah, yeah. That time there was no, you know, they were all united to mm. to oust uh, an invade means uh, uh, foreign the power hmm. out of Afghanistan. So, so what's the ethnic mix like in Afghanistan? So the see there is a census. It is contested. Mm-hmm. You know the you know the but. If you believe what is said, is hmm. that forty-five percent of Afghans are Pashtuns? Only forty-five percent. Yes. Okay. The rest are different. Uh, you know, Tajiks are the second, Azaras, uh, Uzbeks, and hmm. Turkmens. And Turkmens as well. Right. So it all begins with the Soviet invasion, and the the U.S. recruits uh, these these Mujahideen to fight the Soviets. U.S. does not. That's another thing. Hmm. How the ISI became so powerful is uh-huh. that if you believe in what is said and recorded in Zia Ullah, is said. they said the uh, isi particular or the uh, pakistani army will basically organize and run these operations so he had zia ullah had made a uh, i'd asked a commitment from the americans that okay. they would operate through the pakistani army and isi i see so most of these people were and operations were controlled uh, Uh, and operated by the ISI, hmm. and they must have got huge uh, influxes of money as well from the US, yes. right? Yes. And so that's... the number was at one time uh, almost a billion dollars, and f- which is five hundred million dollars uh, given by the US, mm-hmm. matched dollar to dollar by the Saudis. By the Saudis. Yeah, that's how Bin Laden and all became very important because ah. the Saudi uh, Saudi uh, funding and uh, uh, which was uh, was. Match dollar to dollar hmm. uh, by uh, uh, the American funding was match dollar to dollar by the Saudis. By the Saudis, and this also does not take into account the charitable, the uh, the charities working there raising money, hmm. uh, you know, for various humanitarian other purposes, which hmm. was also diverted uh, to the war uh, to the conflict. Hmm. So that money is is separate. This is not about organized state. Uh, Funding right. So eventually, the USSR withdraws. I think it was eighty nine, if I'm not yes. mistaken. The what happens then? So eighty nine, USSR withdraw. But one thing they did was, uh, which I call unfortunately, is left most of their arms and ammunition behind. Okay. 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 History has repeated itself now, right? Right. Yes. So uh, I don't know to what extent, but hmm. yes. So with that. Uh, you know lot of these warlords who were fighting a common enemy hmm. uh, started to when there was no common enemy anymore hmm. uh, they started to uh, you know sort of secure their own uh, fiefdoms fiefdoms right okay uh-huh. and unfortunately they were not able to set up a cohesive governance structure hmm. and also the us stopped 
uh, two factors. One is their own differences and uh, you know infighting between them, and secondly, the U.S. totally lost interest. So okay. there was no. I always said in Afghanistan, U.S. Uh, has been the uh, you know what do you call that the you know the power who who is able to keep things together. together. Okay, you mm. know. So, uh, which is to some extent even now, but mm -hmm. uh, in terms of funding, in terms of other means, mm -hmm. so U.S. when it lost interest and left it, left lost interest in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So there was no uh, civilian projects, nothing mm -hmm. of that sort. Okay, and uh, so that led left Afghanistan on its own. Mm -hmm. We knew the Pakistan influence on in Afghanistan, so they also continued to play a role. Mm -hmm. And that led to '96 when the Taliban uh, rose up and uh, took over till Kabul. So they mostly controlled south and east. Uh -huh. The north, Dostam was there. Dostam, so, Rashid Dostam. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So Mazar-e Sharif was still controlled by Dostam. Okay. Uh, but the south and east, most of that territory and Kabul, which is Kabul, uh, yeah. the center mm. capital, uh, was controlled by the Taliban. Right. Which we know grew out of Kandahar. Mm. Uh, led by Mullah, uh, uh, Mullah, uh, Mullah Umar, Mullah Umar. Mm. and uh, so Talib basically means student. student. Ah, Talib. And uh, what I understand from, although they were fundamentalists in terms of, uh, you know, their religious beliefs, mm -hmm. especially in relation to women, mm -hmm. and uh, not allowing. Uh, music and uh, 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 theater and other media, uh -huh. uh, but uh, they it was relatively more peaceful in the areas they controlled. Okay, they had proper control over the yeah. places. Okay, no crime and all that. Yeah, less crime perhaps. Less crime because mm. they had very strict punishments. Okay, you know, uh, or, or for any uh, crime etc. Uh huh. Right. So uh, they governed till. Till as we all know, till 9/11. Yes, and so I I, I sort of uh, break it down mm -hmm. to, to keep the different periods. So Great Graham 1.0 started in the British time, 19th century. Yeah. Yes. Between the as you know, between the Russians and the and, and the British Empire. Empire, two empires, two empires, and yes. that buffer was created in parts of Afghanistan and now Pakistan. But mm. that time it was part of India. Yes, that was part of India. So India bordered Afghanistan. Yes. Uh, undivided India. So Great Game 2.0 started with the Russian invasion. Mm -hmm. And Great Game 3.0 started with 9-11. This period in between, you can call it whatever, when the Mujahideen came and the Taliban took over. Kind of chaotic period. Chaotic period. Yes. But, uh, Great Game 3.0 started up 9-11 when mm. the West again, you know, went into, it started as a counter CT or a counter-terrorism operation mm. to track down uh, Bin Laden. Mm. Uh, but then, as Trump said it, we were not into nation building, but the West was into nation building and building a progressive liberal state mm -hmm. based on Islam, but liberal. Mm, liberal, liberal yeah. in the Western sense. Sense. Okay. Right. So, they, they built institutions based on Western models. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm. as India was also involved in a large way in uh, building dams, roads, and even the parliament, which mm. our uh, honourable Prime Minister himself inaugurated mm. in uh, 25th December 2015 mm. in Kabul. So we were uh, India, as we know, spent around three billion dollars mm. and had a large presence there in terms of our uh, diplomats and embassy and etc. So we we were a serious player. We were one of I think the fifth largest donor in Afghanistan. Okay. Uh, in terms of we did a lot of work in capacity building. So that was the, what I call the Great Game 3.0. Mm -hmm. And uh, but then by which started in right after 9/11 mm -hmm. or uh, 2002, mm -hmm. uh, 2001. Sorry. Okay. And uh, and then. Around two th from around 2010, this uh, the U.S. war against uh, terror they called it. Uh -huh. It was sort of they were 2006 um, because the Taliban in was you know sort of went out in 2001 hmm. right after 9/11. Uh -huh. But they started reorganizing themselves in 2006 uh -huh. and you know 
you know started again taking over certain areas and cont- and contesting certain areas hmm. by 2010 if you see the us congressional hearing etc it was that we have reached a stalemate okay you know, so this theory of how long will we continue because there was no defi either way is a decisive uh, victory you know for in either side ha huh. so talk about uh, you know reaching a settlement with afghanistan with the taliban started happening at different levels hmm. uh, president karzai uh, uh, made some initiatives and that's when in 2010 when mullah brother was arrested in karachi hmm. the same mullah brother who is now the deputy prime minister hmm. by as we know uh, isi comes ci team uh-huh. and was in jail till th- was uh, uh, captive till 2018 okay when he was released when this talk started now hmm. the qatar talks yes yes so he was at the behest of the americans he was released from pakistan and uh, and, and moved to qatar mm-hmm. with his family mm-hmm. to lead the talks so he finally signed the deal with the master khalidza okay so was he was special- in, so he was in prison until 2018 yes. and then he is parachuted as the leader of the taliban kind of yeah one of the prominent leaders one of the prominent leaders yeah interesting but uh, let's uh, backtrack to the us of invasion of afghanistan so they invade afghanistan they eject the taliban the taliban retreats south of the border into pakistan right yes 2000 yeah so they left we know about hmm. uh, bin laden running into the tora bora mountain tora bora mountain yeah, yeah. and all that hmm. and then we know what bin laden was found in abbottabad and yeah that know. story yeah. yeah so the taliban was never completely destroyed by the us they chose to let it uh, remain so they so they were active but you know what do you call not very active because hmm. 2006 till 2006 my belief is that till 2006 uh, the isf which was called before hmm. the nato came the the international security assistance force uh-huh. uh they were hardly because i was there from late 2002 mm-hmm. i uh, actually august 2002 just one year i re- went to kabul just one year after the invasion us invasion uh, yeah. yeah no one year after 9/11 after 9 usually when concluded in november of 2001 okay mm. so i went to kabul a, a week before the and first anniversary of 9/11 i see I it see. was july of uh, sorry august of 2002 uh, two okay a month okay yeah, yeah. just hmm, a month before that was yeah so before 9/11 basically hmm. so, so september 11th so till then there was no uh, major suicide bombs or any sort of security incidents in kabul okay these incidents started happening 2006 when the presence of the isf increased in the south and east which is the predominant drug area hmm. growing areas of hmm. afghanistan okay when their presence increased there uh, that is when attacks started happening in kabul okay you know as we know in july 2008 7 july our embassy was attacked yes uh, okay by gunmen right and then yeah. bomb blast as well so there was a so we have to distinguish between the suicide attacks in kabul because mm. uh, to my mind taliban has never attacked indian targets right so our threat which i have always said is comes from our common friend, friend. yes a <laughs> common friend common friend or common neighbor yes so uh and we all know that lat hmm. was responsible for that attack and other attacks post that hmm. you know before that hmm. uh so our attack means indian indian assets or indian uh, establishments or indian diplomats have been targeted hmm. uh, purely by uh, we may have some collateral damage because which is we are not the target but wrong place wrong time but ah. um uh, besides that is purely by our common neighbor or friend yes. next door mm-hmm. uh because i have always said that across the board uh, we afghanistan in afghanistan india's goodwill have traveled the world india's mm-hmm. goodwill is number 1 okay mm-hmm. and the next country is germany actually i see germany yeah okay the us is sort of a mixed bag because some afghans blame the us because we lost i don't know how many million lives during the soviet period yes. us soviet uh, conflict proxy conflict yes using the mujahideen yes uh, you know afghanistan suffered so hmm. they believe that the us owed them uh, you know because they lost uh, you know their country was destroyed hmm. during that period right 
and uh, and then the us abandoned them mm. and then us re-entered into afghanistan post 9/11 yes as like i said as a counter terrorism operation but then yes. they they had other uh, uh they then they expanded that uh, presence there with various uh, initiatives to rebuild the country mm. both in terms of infrastructure and capacity yes and establish a democratically based governance model they had elections so, and all that yeah they had elections they formed a presidential form of government similar to the us yes uh, the law so mr karzai was the first president so karzai was uh, was uh, elect i means chosen as a in bonn in 2002 uh -huh. as the i think it's june 2002 as hmm. the transitional leader okay and then he was his first election took place in 2004 when he was elected okay and the second election took place in 2009 when he was re-elected i see and then 14 mr ghani uh, president ghani was elected hmm. and then 19 again was president ghani was re but he could not complete his term yeah and also as you know that that time uh, dr abdullah was in all these elections the hmm. second second uh, president or i don't know what runner the runner up of runner up uh, but always because of uh, like one of the senior uh, us dip, uh, diplomat said that um, the winner does not take all this is a quote he made hmm. the us had to intervene to uh, keep the peace yeah, keep the peace and uh, settle a government with some compromises between the, various factions the winner and the second runner which is uh -huh. you know so all the president were pashtuns and, and uh -huh. we know dr uh, abdullah is a, is a tajik is a tajik isn't he yeah yes so to keep that uh, balance uh -huh. of power mm. and uh, you know so they had to work out deals uh, mm. as you know in ghani's government also uh, dr abdullah was given the title of ceo mm. ceo right right so uh, so that has always happened us intervention has always uh -huh. happened to you know to come to some compromise politically so the americans kept the thing going yes. for the best part of two decades yes but in the meanwhile you already had you always had the taliban at the back at the back of so your mind the taliban were controlling certain areas certain contesting areas. certain areas there uh -huh. are different numbers floating and there are two factions of the taliban right the pakistani taliban the afghan taliban no as in the afghan context see uh -huh. The Afghan is the the that is TTP. TTP, Tehri ke Taliban, Pakistan. But in the Afghan context, it's one Taliban. One Taliban. Yeah. Okay. The uh, within the Taliban now we talk about Hakanis and this and that, uh -huh. which according to me is what I learn from my uh, sources and other inform uh, sources of information is that the real power uh, uh, struggle or the power thing is between the Amir and the deputies, not. That much so between the Kandharis and the Hakanis. You know. Okay. What's the, the Hakani factor in this? Hakanis were basically injected, were not originally in the original Taliban. Hmm. Okay. Yes. If you look at the ISI, put them in there around 2014-15. Okay. So hmm. and they are from the eastern, uh, eastern part of Afghanistan, hmm. whereas the Mullah Mullah Omar came from Kandhar. Kandhar okay. west. Hmm. So southwest. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. so there are from different tribes and regions, so hmm. there is that difference. Okay. Uh, the Kakanis were made uh, uh, the leaders of the. So the Taliban basically have two in their structure. They have the mullahs who are the clerics, mm -hmm. and then they have the fighters. The so they have the militia, which the militia. are controlled by commanders. Okay. So the the military wing was headed by Hakanis, hmm. and now the Hakanis are controlled. Sirajuddin Haqqani is the inter acting interior minister mm. and uh, uh, Mullah Umar's son uh, Mullah Yaqub is the defense acting defense minister. Mm. So the Haqqanis are Pakistani proxies essentially. So they were they work for CIA they are proxies in the sense how much control you know we are seeing now what is happening with the TTP. Huh. So they were uh, you know in one phase I could say mm. but how effective that is we are seeing you know we have different reports uh, mm. you know pakistan we day, you know on a daily basis hear about the the uh, you know the acrimony the actions of ttp yes uh, they recently took over certain areas in chitral ah. 
Yes, very recently. Yes. yes. So, uh, you know, non non Muslim regions. So that tells you that uh, you know is is Pakistan really in control of whether it's Akhani's or other factions of the Taliban? How much influence do they really have? Right. Yes. And I actually wrote about this because you know there was a general feeling that Pakistan has you know controls the Taliban completely. That's the general perception. Yeah, but. it was a phase where they mm. were dependent on them mm. so there was dependency and coercion mm. both mm. and when the dependency and coercion on because afghans by nature are people who are extremely proud mm. and independent mm. okay mm. so they the, the, when their dependence and the coercion factor was there because they had to be on the other side of the durand line yes. for obvious reason yes because they needed that support and they also send their uh, people for medical you know fighters you know who got injured etc mm. and they had their families on the other side of the durand line mm. that dependence the moment taliban took control of kabul you know you know sort of diminished largely largely yes so now it's reversed <laughs> frankly right which i had written about in an article way back when the deal was signed okay you know mm. and i had mentioned very clearly mm. that uh, that the taliban once that changes and they are in 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 seat in power in kabul mm. that dynamic of that relationship will reverse. totally change it is totally reversed right right, right. so the ebc about ttp not being you know being controlled there there have been various initiatives of trying to make a deal and you know train them in etc but hmm. uh, i don't see any you know significant uh, success in in that direction hmm. there's there's been a big pashtun influx into pakistan the past two decades hmm. and i hear that karachi has become a pashtun majority city kind of right yeah so they are mainly in peshawar hmm. Uh, Karachi, they've spread all around. As we knew, in uh, even in Balochistan, Quetta was hmm. Quetta Shora was based in, yeah, in in which is which is in Balochistan. Balochistan, yes. So during the uh, you know before they came to power in Kabul, hmm. the Quetta Shora, there were other Shoras also. Hmm. Uh, Shora. What's a Shora? Can you explain that? Shora is the you know the council, which hmm. governing council you can call it. Okay, which are leaders who decide on you know the main governing. council mm-hmm. in right con- right so there was there's a Which very powerful under the amir under the amir area. right like regional councils no it it is the main governing council there were other councils mm-hmm. also there was miram shah mm-hmm. there was quetta quetta and there was in peshawar also okay but now that is all consolidated in kandahar okay, okay. under the amir under the amir right The Pakistanis have this great dream of strategic depth in Afghanistan. What exactly is that? Concern? So Pakistanis, with their uh, rivalry with India, hmm. uh, uh, wanted you know that and to expand their uh, sort of uh, that means that was the reason mm-hmm. to not allow India to because we we have a historical ties as I said the pre-British period we had. you know we we talk about kandhari we talk about kabuli wala we talk about no afghanistan historically was you could say a part yeah, of india you know yeah. yes. so it we undivided india had a border with and uh, main concern was the the um, it's the anti india doctrine mm. of of pakistan pakistan mm. uh, wanted to make sure that the indian presence or influence in afghanistan is reduced number one mm-hmm. number two under ziaul haq when he that whole domain your luck imagine himself as uh, the leader of the islamic world so okay he wanted to increase his influence uh-huh. based on that uh-huh. in central asia you know beyond pakistan hmm. the third factor is the durand line which is contested so you know which is a con- very potent contested issue for pakistan hmm. so in order to have more influence so that you know the afghans or the pashtuns to keep them in check mm-hmm. on both sides of the durand line they mm-hmm. needed that strategic depth mm-hmm. to counter that okay. so i would say these three factors so they essentially wanted to make pa- afghanistan an extension of pakistan and control what's happening control, within yeah. yeah so just an imaginary border but they control everything that happens they have influence so see right. they, they can, pashtuns like i said afghans are fiercely independent you yes. know so we know now we have the ptm movement uh-huh. on this side of yes. this thing 
So Pashtuns tribally are united and they don't recognize, even the Taliban don't recognize the Duran line as a national, as an international boundary. Okay, whereas, mm. you, like I said earlier, they were influenced as much by Taliban. So if there is, they also, and they are predominantly Pashtuns. Right. So, you know, they so the Taliban is a Pashtun nationalist movement. Predominantly, they have other factions, they have Tajiks, they have Azaras, mm. but they Predominantly Pashtun. Predominantly Pashtun. So let's talk about the Duran line. So the, the Duran line, as far as I know, is the remnant of the old boundary between the Sikh Empire of Maharaja Ranjit Singh mm -hmm. and the Duranis or the, the Afghan right. Uh, right. kingdom. And that became the border between India and Afghanistan. That's what the British made it. Right. But today it's a huge boundary dispute, territorial dispute between Afghanistan and Pakistan. The so Afghans it's similar to what we have, not mm -hmm. similar, but we have LSC and LOC. You see, these are... Uh, uh, these are remnants of British times, yes, yes. treaties, you know, hmm. which does not clearly demarcate international boundaries. And hmm. there were settlements made at that time for the needs of that time. For the needs of the British, so, essentially. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, you know, these, like we have, with the, like I said, with LOC and LAC, yes. it's the same thing, which hmm. was also done by the time of British. Yes. So, these things will eventually need to be settled. Yes. Between, you know, on countries on both sides. Yes. And, you know, so, and in case of, uh, largely in case of, uh, uh, because our LOC, LOC is not that much inhabited, but in case of Pashtuns, you know, their identity, which they call a Pakhtun Khwa. Yes. Uh, you know, and, you know, they have families and everything on both sides. So, hmm. that, dividing that up, you know, and having a, uh, 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 enforceable border, which hmm. Pakistan has, has I don't know how far succeeded, but has been fencing that border also. Fencing the border, okay. Yeah, but it's still not as secure as it, as they want it to be. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. So the Afghans would like to have Khyber Pakhtunkhwa back, right? No, they call it Pashtunistan that region. Yeah, so they call it uh, Pakhtunkhwa is the name they have. For okay. In their language. Okay, so that that this is a province in Pakistan, right? Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Yeah. Right. So that borders hmm. Afghanistan. So isn't that what the Taliban would like to reintegrate with Afghanistan? Yeah. So they used to also say Peshawar is we built Peshawar. There was Achha. you know there was okay. nothing in Peshawar, so we went and built Peshawar. It was called the pa Pakistani territory, but uh -huh. you know, because ethnic hmm. and tribal uh, presence hmm. of people is what is driving that, and hmm. the, like like I said, the British Treaty did not. It was a temp. It was not a permanent. It was a treaty which yeah. was done for that time. Right. I don't know the the facts of when it expired. Does it expire or what the terminology is? Mm, right. Right. But it is. It is. It has been a very important, uh, you know, uh, sore point. Right. So and that's the reason. Like I said, that strategic depth was also to cover this issue because if to you cover the strategic issue. depth, you have more influence on that. On the other side, hmm, rather than vice versa, because you have to define strategy. Strategic depth basically means that you have influence. Like you when I say India, uh -huh. what I have always sort of said is India has goodwill number one, uh -huh. but then how much of that translates into real influence? Not really, not much. Yeah, yeah. So that's where our decision maker, policy makers, have hmm. to come out. I find this is an opportunity with the geopolitical. We talk about a multipolar world today, hmm. and uh, people, you know, you know. You know, the old arrangements are sort of shifting. Yeah, it's all moving. India, if if it as a, re, uh, as a regional power and aspiring global power, has to also take a more proactive stance of how we can go on base of these historical ties of people and goodwill and play a larger role, mm -hmm. you know, and, and not get uh, bogged down with these Western uh, you know, arrangements which suit their interests in the region. Yes, right. Because we are a regional player hmm. and whether it's Afghanistan or Pakistan, hmm. we need to come up with, because uh, I believe in this, uh, with China and India and this region, I think uh, probably two thirds of the world's population lives. Yes, there. yes. And so much of the GDP of the world is generated. Yes. So if peace comes and connectivity comes. Connectivity. So yes. India needs India, like you talk about strategic depth in terms of strategy, depth, I think India has more to gain or lose in Afghanistan. Absolutely, yes. In order to, you know, to sustain, it means to be a regional and global power. Yes, we, we need access to Central Asia first. Of yeah, all. so we need to look, play a more proactive role hmm. 
uh, you know in the region hmm. as the taliban government has not been as we know not recognized hmm. but um, uh, we saw recently the chinese uh, appointing a new ambassador there hmm. so the engagement is increasing mm-hmm. you know it's not that it it so after the the takeover of taliban by the taliban in uh, august 15th hmm. 2021 21 yes the western role of nation building etc and security declined completely mm-hmm. okay after which started with their signing of the agreement with the taliban mm-hmm. and the us uh, withdrawal mm-hmm. it it became a counter terrorism and humanitarian process mm-hmm. but now geopolitically afghanistan again is coming back in the limelight in 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 view of the ukrainian because it is after all russia's backyard also it is okay and the chinese uh, with cpec and other trying to extend bri into into afghanistan and and uh, signing up contracts for investments in major mineral and oil and gas resources mm-hmm. the us has also become more active in terms of engaging with the taliban on uh, on the uh, side on the side of in, you know looking at investments mm-hmm. aca which is afghan american chamber of uh uh man chamber of commerce has had meetings uh, in september in kabul with senior representatives mm. of the taliban attending mm. so there has been a lot of movement in in terms of uh, the investment angle uh, mm. uh, sadly the the angle on the gender issue mm. is an issue but it uh, it it is not a uh, it is not a show stopper so i would say in engaging in taliban on mm. other param- other areas mm. relating to counter terrorism security economics and mm. politically more or less when you are engaging more you are you know you you are giving legitimacy yes to the uh, the people in power mm-hmm. as far as the terminal uh, the uh, agreement in doha is concerned yeah let, let's talk about that, that yeah yeah so mm. that had two parts hmm. one was uh, ambassador khalidat's mandate was uh, safe withdrawal of us forces okay so they were already planning this in 2018 yeah it was under talk like i said from 2010 2010 yeah uh, all hmm. before that the exit strategy yeah hmm. and uh, that it had to happen hmm. you know it was how and when right, right. yes so as we know the british uh, the history of afghanistan hmm. is that you know people who retreat i have to save their backside you know mm-hmm. since we've seen we know about from history what happened to the british yes and the russians yes so us has made a concern of a safe withdrawal mm-hmm. so it was done in phases of us troops moving back to population centers and uh-huh. then you know creating that existence as we know that when they flew out of bagram finally finally even the afghan government was not aware they were not informed it happened in the middle of the night yeah because they they did not want any uh, you know mishaps or things because yes. of whatever reason uh-huh. uh as uh, ambassador khalidzad had his primary objective was because he is like he says he has an american hat and afghan hat he happens to be afghan but yes. he is american the afghans expected more for him yes. so, but natural mm-hmm. in terms of negotiating a hard deal uh, with the taliban on the political uh, compromise between the existing government mm-hmm. and the taliban coming in mm-hmm. uh, but un- unfortunately uh, that part of the deal for various reasons could not happen and when the deal was signed the next phase was to uh, which this deal was signed in uh, in february 29 february 2020 uh-huh. and the next phase to have intra afghan talks as they call mm-hmm. in in qatar mm-hmm. and which started in september of 2020 between the taliban and, and the existing government yes, yes. between representatives of the exi- they didn't recognize them as the government uh-huh. so they said we are still and if you see the agreement they have used the word I- iea mm-hmm. Isl- uh, islamic emirates of afghanistan, afghanistan. Mm-hmm. which the if you see the agreement us said we don't recognize it but it, they have asked them that we will be called iea okay and they didn't recognize the government as a representatives come okay on the contrary all right okay. that <laughs> so from the gani government aha uh-huh. okay hmm. but un, uh, for various reasons you know that could not be sort of agreed to hmm. 
Okay. The too many differences. Yeah, there were various factors. So yeah, uh, they wanted it their way. Ambassador, uh, finally, it was uh, uh, President Ghani said that he should remain in power for six months. Okay. And then let a process of elections happen and all. Okay. So that was so, clearly not acceptable. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. he was, uh, and all along, I think uh, uh, President Ghani and others uh, presume because Trump was voted out of office. Mm -hmm. That's another thing important. And Biden, President Biden came to power, so they thought that Trump's exit policy may be reversed. Okay. And there would be some presence of the U.S. to ensure because. U.S. needed some leverage in terms of security to ensure, you know, who would ensure that even if something was agreed to, it would be it would be adhered to. Yes, right. You know, so uh, compliance was an issue. That mm. what leverage do you have to ensure compliance? Yes. And one of the leverage you can have is having security forces. Yes. To ensure that. Mm. So I think they thought there would be a reversal. You know, uh, some of our policymakers also thought there would okay. be a reversal with okay. Biden coming. It may not go, but. On the contrary, you know, uh, it was accelerated. He uh, he fast tracked yeah. that even uh, which actually everything unraveled because of that. Hmm. You know, it it was a very hasty withdrawal at the yeah, end because he just wanted to get it done with. Yes. Okay. Hmm. And uh, uh, and Biden's own position has been when he was in, with Obama also that he was not in agreement of. We know his views about Afghanistan even during that period. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that actually unraveled everything, mm -hmm. and the Taliban, as we know, came to power. Yes, actually, and uh, and another factor happened that uh, when the U.S. forces came to Kabul airport to secure the airport, that mm -hmm. was their task, and to in ensure the egg, uh, the exit of uh, their. Uh, Special Mishimata, forces yeah. and other people and mm. their own people. Mm. Uh, uh, as per a, a public statement in the congressional hearing, the general was asked that why, because the Taliban asked him to secure the rest of Kabul mm -hmm. while he was there with 6,000 forces. And he has said publicly in his congressional hearing that I was told that my mandate is only to secure Kabul airport. Airport, okay. So Sorry. the Taliban actually information I have were already in parts of Kabul hmm. much before August 15th, okay. two months before okay. certain areas. Interesting. And they and Ambassador Khalilja were trying to do a deal that they should you know have a, a, a more respectful uh, exit the Ghani government and mm -hmm. with Taliban coming in and some sort of compromise is being made. Okay. But when President Ghani suddenly left on the morning of uh, 2000 uh, on 15th August 21 hmm. uh, the whole city collapsed in terms yes. of security and we saw the scenes chaotic scenes at the airport in at fact airport. our flight I, I, I was there India GSA and we operated our flight in the afternoon during while that chaos was going on from I the see. airport I see and the airport has on the uh, eastern side is the city hmm. entrance with the civilian side and the Western side of the airport is the military side. Okay. So that was secured the western side, but the eastern because the security once they learned around ten thirty in the morning, then um, uh, President Ghani had left. Left. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so they all, you know, just fled. fled and they okay. left the air civilian side of the airport totally unguarded, which mm -hmm. led, res resulted in the chaos of people, crowds coming, public yeah. bystanders, others entering in. From the civilian side, because there was no control, uh, no one to stop them, and uh, so that and the Taliban has, uh, you know, basically just walked in. Walked in. That's it, right? Yeah. So, although they, I hear that reports, like I said, in the general, I said it in his congressional hearing that they asked them that you know you take over and you know we will wait. Mm -hmm. But since, and they said that, that's what the Taliban say, that, we, that since there was no one to go on Kabul. We had to step in. Step in. Yeah, right. So, so we also withdrew our, our embassy staff. And so, yeah. So, um, 17th was our, as I remember, we mm. sent in a plane and uh, remove, I mean, uh, evacuated our uh, uh, diplomats, mm. including our ambassador, mm. uh, Ambassador Tandon, mm. from Kabul. 
then we did some other evacuation flights subsequently yes for some Sikhs mm -hmm. another originally we flew IL-76 but we couldn't fly uh, so the C-130 mm -hmm. uh, Globemaster Globemaster yes but we couldn't because it's a military aircraft we couldn't fly over, fly over Pakistan, Pakistan so yes. we had to do a longer route and uh, there is issue because it's a big aircraft there is issue with refueling etc mm -hmm. So, uh, then we eventually based them in uh, the other evacuations. Subsequent to that, we based these aircraft in, uh, we used to do it to Tajikistan. Interesting. And we used to bring, we operate civilian flights from Tajikistan because we have a base there. I mean, Miss? Uh, uh, I don't know the name. Farkhor. Yeah. Yeah. So, we have since a long time. Mm. So, we use that air base. Mm. We operated the the military flights from Kabul to Tajikistan, Tajikistan yeah. and civilian flights which are allowed to go fly Pakistan from mm. uh, India to Tajikistan. I see. So we did the rest of the evacuation mm -hmm. after that. Right. So that's when the Taliban took control, August 2021. Yes. And it was reasonably smooth, right? Yes. I mean, the Afghan National Army kind of vanished into thin air. No, so not only Kabul. So uh -huh. within, if you look at the events happening fifth, one week, roughly one week to two weeks before that, mm. other cities, it was like a pack of cards. It so just fell. Out. Yeah. So the uh, leaders in the north fled. Mm. Everything fled. Yes. And um, and this time, Taliban had already taken control of the borders on the north. Mm. You know, before these events. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are various things that deals were made. Mm. Not All the way right. north, it's like far from their bases, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Yes. So, uh, etc. But, mm. you know, everything collapsed, right? From strongholds of anti-Taliban, right from Herat to Mazar to mm. uh, other areas. Mm. It, it all collapsed. Panshir... Panshir, there was some resistance. Yeah, Panshir yeah. held out. Yes. Okay. Uh, so they tried, they set up, they call it the Pancheri Resistance Force earlier. Mm -hmm. It was interesting because they didn't call it Northern Alliance, the okay. old uh -huh. nomenclature. Yes. Uh, then they now called it the NRF, mm -hmm. National Resistance Force. But if you read recent reports, September 29th, I was reading on Trulo News, uh -huh. that Sirajuddin Khani went and addressed, okay. went down to Panchir and addressed a public gathering. I see. So it's full control now. Yeah. Okay. And also uh, charged the affairs of uh, US hmm. to Afghanistan has made a statement, I think on 6th of 15th of September hmm. that, uh, you know, they will not support any, you know, Afghanistan has had enough wars and, hmm. uh, you know, and it's a very clear statement that hmm. it's been 40 years of war. Hmm. So US is not in favor of any resistance. Okay. And that is very apparent because the U.S. made a deal with Taliban. That's right. They uh, ensured this yeah. handover takes place. Yes. Right. So, how has the Taliban governance or rule over Afghanistan been since they took over? So, what I understand is corruption has reduced. Hmm. So, various factors. Uh, yeah, yeah, we know everything one knows. We read every day about the women's rights and the, you know, stopping the social, which I call the social factors. Okay. Mm -hmm. Social impact. Uh, uh, economically, they are doing better hmm. from the reports. Uh, inflation is negative. Okay. They have, for the first time, received, uh, you know, which was used to be a target in the pre Taliban time hmm. in the Ghani government of $2 billion of uh, revenue hmm. by for the Afghan government, uh -huh. which they have achieved. They have achieved it. Okay. Okay. Uh, as we have also read reports that the Afghan currency is one of the strongest currency against the dollar <laughs> and has appreciated by some 7% or something. I see. So, economically, they're doing better. Salaries are being paid on time. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But people are suffering because of uh, 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 lack of uh, uh, lack of employment. I see. Unemployment is a Unemployment problem. And, uh, you know, the economy... Mm. Uh, uh, Shrinking. Okay. Because you see, Afghanistan traditionally, if I put it very simply mm -hmm. or crudely, is a drug and uh, economy main sources were drug and donation. Opium, poppies, and donations. Right. Okay. Yeah. So as the Pakistan, Afghan, uh, the Taliban have also, as we've read reports, uh, uh, drastically reduced the drug cultivation. Mm -hmm. I hear it's less than 99% now. Yeah. I mean, they reduced by 99%. Yeah. Mm. And so that was a source of income. Yes. Right. Yes. 
and we know what happened to donation compared to earlier now we have some humanitarian aid but it's a fraction of what it used to be mm. so that was a big contributor it's not the like i said the revenue was 2 billion but at that time it used to, us still used to give 4 billion just to fund the uh, uh, the afghan national security mm. force and the anp and uh, the army and the afghan national police uh uh-huh. so but the war is over so as you asked me there is peace internally displaced people are moving back okay because during that process of takeover of taliban hmm. people had to seek safe uh, refuge in cities which were protected yes because as the taliban were coming closer to kabul mm-hmm. now they have moved back okay so uh, there is Inter- uh, inter- so there is peace mm-hmm. so the secondly like one interview of a trucker came that he corruption and other things were so high mm-hmm. the cost of doing business has gone down because you don't have local warlords and corruption to pay off all pay that. off yeah okay mm-hmm. so these are the positive factors and negative factors we all know is women's rights and people suffering because of lack of uh, employment opportunities and it, you know the their uh, as a report i read 90% of the money is used just to survive uh-huh. so, a family's income okay so you know they, so they are suffering because of that mm-hmm. um and the answer to that is that you have to increase investment mm-hmm. in afghanistan mm-hmm. i mean i'm not getting to political constraints of but, course yeah uh keeping the politics aside mm-hmm. because you have to employ you know there has to be investment there are, they have vast mineral resources which have been well documented mesquite and copper so there is lots lots so there's lithium there mm. is oil and gas there is gems mm. there is um, iron ore mm-hmm. which india bid for which i had also played a role in the hajiga mines okay. where in india private public partnership but sale and uh, the jindals had bid and won the bid actually okay but it never went into a contract okay uh for some reasons um so there is there is mineral wealth mineral wealth hmm. so and secondly afghanistan had, as president ghani used to mean can be the roundabout or global logistic club because of the location yes so between uh, east and pakistan west. creates a constraint but yeah. between in east and the west right uh, so that also is an opportunity hmm. as a logistical hub right uh but that all requires um, of course ensuring security first yes and then also building uh, logistic uh, the routes so with the pakistan factor that's a constraint with china with iran having sanctions although india india has invested a lot of money in chabahar yes chabahar but that has never realized its full potential because of other certain uh, uh, missing infrastructure mm-hmm. link mm-hmm. which is a railroad between zaidan and chabahar yes and also practically i've been to chawar mm-hmm. thrice uh, um, uh, in fact i was there when balakot happened and okay yeah. okay <laughs> so uh, on a chawar day event where they had seen a representation but their practical problems is that uh, when people are reluctant to do business out of chawar because they, they don't want to be on the wrong side of the us sanctions yes right mm-hmm. so those initiatives have not not reached their full potential mm-hmm. you know so so in Afga- in the context of afghanistan it's not security but it's also the logistics of getting in and out yes right right so when you talk about mining mm. you need to have viable workable access yeah. to but as the mining industry said evacuate whatever you are mining out of afghanistan you need because, routes yeah yeah so you need those transportation and uh, you know uh, routes with the necessary infrastructure yes to move uh, things in and out yes the supply yeah. chains yeah right what's the india factor in afghanistan so as we we i think everyone in india knows that india has invested a lot in afghanistan right. not just uh, during the last 20 years even before that and maybe even now so what what is that like so india is now so we have a technical mission there so as you we said earlier that august 15 21 17th actually hmm. we flew we shut down our mission yes and our ambassador and staff flew out of afghanistan mm-hmm. we reestablished that in june of 
22. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is about little more than a year ago. Mm-hmm. We have a technical mission. We are sending in that is basically to some pro- to execute certain projects we are already doing okay. in Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. Also sending in, in humanitarian aid. Okay. So mm-hmm. we need to engage with Taliban for those aspects. Mm-hmm. Uh, beyond that, we have not, you know, sort of because of this thing of recognition yes. of Taliban, we have not, you know, start. I I have not heard or seen any thinking. Uh-huh. But like I said earlier, I believe that India should. We are seeing the Chinese how they are coming in. Others, the US are coming in. So India should not be left behind. Yeah, India should not be left behind. Hmm. We should, you know, capitalize on our goodwill. Although the visa issue has created a lot of. Indian, we not giving visas to Afghans. Oh, we not. Yeah. Okay. You know, which we stopped right after August fifteenth. Okay. And okay. even cancelled the visas which were already issued. Okay. So in fact, students because we used to, um, I don't know how many thousand students. Afghan students was, coming to India. Yeah, uh-huh. on scholarship uh, by the Indian government. Mm-hmm. So some of them were back home for this thing. Even they who were already pursuing studies there could not come. And then I hear people staying here are asking. For extension of their visas, which are not happening. Okay. So that has become a very big issue mm. amongst the Afghans, you know. Okay. Uh, because we were issuing almost thou- at one time thousand visas a day just from the embassy in Kabul. I see. I see. Mm. And from that to zero, practically zero. Mm. So, um, so that has, you know, India has to address that issue. Mm. You know, because how do you do people to people contact, increase engagement without? This basic thing. Mm-hmm. The other thing is that India can look at uh, projects there, mm-hmm. uh, and also uh, the Afghan diaspora were non-political business because they they have roots there and they have this thing and they have money. They have moved out to Dubai and to Turkey and other places. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, some sort of platform and structure with India's help can be set up mm-hmm. because India is a large market for. Right from dry fruits and mineral resources, etc. Yes, is to you know resettle, help them go back to Afghanistan mm-hmm. with the uh, with the blessings of the current administration, uh-huh. and to reestablish his businesses there. Mm-hmm. You know, so India can play a role. India can also play a role uh, between the the uh, to some extent. Mm-hmm. Although the Taliban are not to. Keen on a political, they're inviting people back, but there is no political discussion. Okay. So as far as we could talk about inclusivity of minorities and other mm. things, it is more about engaging means with leaders. Okay. But Taliban, as far as I know, is reluctant to uh, engage with leaders of the past. So, okay. Okay. So mm. can we help in, you know, some? India can play a role because India has a large goodwill across the board, as I kept on saying. Why does India have such such large? Goodwill? So it has been because of historical mm-hmm. factors. Are are in the recent time is our aid, our projects. Mm-hmm. Bollywood is a very big factor. Okay, you know it's like that serial Tulsi. Mm-hmm. They call it their Sazbi Kabi Bahuthi. It was as popular as Ramayan was in India. I see. You know so. And and you see Bollywood songs, so India is part of their culture and, and culture. Mm. So they are listening to Indian music all the time. Mm. Um, they understand Hindi, right? Most who are them. listening, I don't know now, but now, okay. yeah, mm. but in Afghan home, so they look up to India. Mm. You know, Afghans across the board, mm. and uh, you know, it's you know, you know about Kabuliwala, yeah, you know, all that. So, mm. uh, India, you know, uh, has to understand and. Make that that goodwill the foundational block, mm, right? Which cuts across these other divisions which they have. And India has uh, invested in agricultural projects and dams and whatnot, right? Of course. So we have uh, we have built the transmission lines. Mm. Uh, we have built the parliament. Mm, yes. In which was inaugurated by Prime Minister Modi in 2015. Mm-hmm. In fact, coincidentally, just before he flew to Lahore. To Lahore, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was there then. Okay. Uh, I was there at the airport. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I witnessed that personally. Mm-hmm. We have built, as you said, Salma Dam, mm-hmm. hydro projects. You know. Mm-hmm. Besides that, the the other is I won't call it soft power, but the real power we have is all the Afghans we trained in India, whether it was 
the uh, people on scholarship mm. or even in that means which is now controversial but even in the military military okay so uh, you know so that is our you know uh, our relationship is 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 very strong i believe even some of the taliban leaders were trained in india stanak zai stanak zai yeah yes so he was trained in ima i believe decades ago yes yes right hmm so he i believe is the deputy foreign minister now indeed yes yeah. yeah so how open is the taliban to engaging with india i think taliban have already stated very clearly hmm. that we have originally they don't of course officially they don't differ but they don't call out pakistan but hmm. we have to have uh, you know relationship with everyone and especially in the region hmm. so they they don't hold anything frankly against india hmm. of or any reason of not engaging with india hmm. rather i feel that in terms of their strategy to counter pakistan hmm. they they need us yes to be present and, hmm. and economically like i said earlier we can do much more because we are a large market hmm. so it's it's a, if you treat that as an investment opportunity hmm. it's it's a huge potential and also uh, to add there geopolitically americans would very really encourage us coming in there to counter the chinese uh, uh, chinese presence in Yes, in in, uh, in Afghanistan, hmm. the Chinese have expressed the desire to extend the BRI through Afghanistan, but it's never happened. It's never so happened, right? It is now. We see what happened in Sri Lanka. What CPEC is happening? It, yeah, ideology is there, but then that old BRI model of having the country take on debt hmm. for that infrastructure will not work. Yeah, it won't work. Yeah. Hmm. So I doubt the Taliban will agree. And the same thing is happening in Nepal. Hmm. it is stalled because that model of a debt based uh, model and also you know see the chinese built these models based on their assessment or their capacity let's put it hmm. without working the sustainability and viability of those projects hmm. right so it was a supply side you know rather than a demand side determined indeed uh, indeed uh, yeah you know, so hamband hota is yeah, yeah there you go so they went all in based on what they could do means hmm. without assessing you know what the country could sustain yes right you know so that's another issue even the cpac cpac nothing has happened none of the projects has been a viable project right yeah so lots of investment but yeah none of these projects has fructified so pakistan is the common thorn whether it's afghanistan or india it's the it's the both it's it's the common enemy isn't it the the taliban don't see pakistan as a friend do they no the people they don't have problem with the state they have a problem mm. so it's the politics it's a political problem yeah okay it's the same with india ah uh -huh. people to people we don't have a problem no issues yeah but the state is a problem yeah right. so it is it is the in case of india it's the what i call the anti india doctrine hmm pakistan as a state it's not a question of terrorism alone where hmm. does that flow from yes pakistan as a no pakistan as a state was based on anti india doctrine if they drop that doctrine There's no there is no there is no reason to exist as a separate state exactly then exactly. you go back to east and west germany yeah that's right hmm. so they have to live by the doctor as far as afghanistan is concerned there is a durand line there hmm. are other issues hmm. they have and uh, uh, and that whole the unfortunately that whole besides taliban being in afghanistan there are tw which were there earlier also 20 odd terrorist groups operating hmm. in afghanistan hmm. you know and some of them have supported they have ties with taliban because they helped them in their struggle yes so uh, uh, the only uh, uh, so uh, afghan uh, pakistan's problem is that their economics because they did not invest in their country they did not build the country hmm. they uh, how should it they, they, they were rentier state for superpowers they always Absolutely. tried to as hussein akani says yeah. they didn't develop a strategy for regional how will they for their foreign policy based on regional connectivity and trade mm, mm. it is always paying second fiddle to a superpower yes so they you know they they were always arbitraging that power mm. okay their people suffered they didn't develop their country their it's a democracy as we know for the sake of democracy nominally so yeah so they have multiple issues mm. and even the 
the the Saudis and the Middle East, which used to bail them out earlier, not happening anymore. Anymore. Yes. So you know, they, and they were dead trapped with the CPEC. Yes. So uh, you know, so they, uh, I don't know. So they. Yeah. So that's my question now. So Pakistan is a nation that no one likes. None of their neighbors like them. The Iranians don't like them. The Afghans don't like them. The Indians don't like them. The Saudis, etc. They also don't want to have anything to do with Pakistan. Yeah. How long can Pakistan keep on existing, in your opinion, as as a unified, coherent nation? So they will. The U.S. will means no one knows, frankly. That's as long as the U.S. needs them, anybody's a guess. Yeah? No, U.S. also. Hmm. That's another very good point. Hmm. How this I said to a Pakistani strategic thinker recently. Hmm. So there was this talk, and then she said that Pakistan will just not deeply. She said go into the Arabian Sea. So my uh, answer to that was, now, uh, do you think there is no U.S. presence in Afghanistan? <laughs> mm -hmm. So two reasons the U.S. needed Pakistan was for their campaign in Afghanistan. That yes. was a logistical route through Karachi, etc. Yes. So they needed them. Mm -hmm. Second is if they are already present to whatever. Means and scale in mm -hmm. Afghanistan. Again, their Pakistan's relevance to the U.S. is diminished. Yes. Then third factor, not in that order, is the Chinese relationship with Pakistan is yes. also a thorn in the U.S.'s because the overarching U.S.-China rivalry will always create that suspicion of you know how much you can trust the Pakistanis. Yes. Okay. So I feel that dynamic has changed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. U.S. will put it on a what I call an ICU drip, so mm. that it sort of does not collapse overnight. Overnight, yeah. So they don't know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And then we have the nuclear. That's uh, the real question. Yeah, yeah. How to secure arsenal, those? Yeah. yeah. So I think it's no one has, frankly, uh, it is just a survival on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. It'll just sort of drift without collapsing. We saw what happened in. With the attacks on uh, on the army's recently residents mm. about a year ago, whatever. Mm. So I really don't know. Mm. Means uh, uh, and like I said, since Afghanistan economically and otherwise with the U.S.'s support mm. is sort of stabilizing. Stabilizing. I don't say everyone is happy, but mm. overall, overall, macro. Yeah, they are mm. going into phase of I see phase mm. of these investment conferences and all mm. because U.S. will have to. Make sure that if there are any constraints, those are uh, you know technically sorted. Uh -huh. So to make the flow of investments, etc. And if if that happens in Afghanistan, um, so I don't know that in Pakistan because also when you talk about investment, you know, although Pakistan is trying to privatize stuff and raise investments, mm -hmm. because population-wise, economy is much larger than Afghanistan. Uh, but with mineral wealth and other opportunities of investment in Afghanistan, uh, if those logistical constraints uh, are tackled, hmm. I think the growth, U.S.'s focus, hmm. put it in a different way, will be more on Afghanistan hmm. because they're still in the region. They can still have an eye on, yes, on Russia, Pakistan, China, China, yes. And even India for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> so you said that uh, Afghanistan needs these supply chains, these routes to to. Yeah, it's yeah. a logistical. It's logistical. A landlocked country, your yeah. dependency, your cost of trade, and mm. everything increases. So. Yeah. Mm. So assuming hypothetically India is able to re-establish a connection with Afghanistan land border, it would happen via JNK, right? Yeah, I mean, if, if India were route is mm. to uh, the northeast of Afghanistan. Northeast, the Wakhan okay. Corridor region. Yeah, yeah, but that's a very mountainous region, isn't it? Yeah, it, that is not a. You can't build roads yeah. and railways through that. Yeah. So ideally, India would need the Khyber Pass to reach Afghanistan. I, I, ideally, yeah. yeah. So, so hmm, that's not uh, going to happen uh, reasonably soon, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, uh, how do you foresee? How how do you see Afghanistan going the next ten years or so? So you can't say I will not f give a picture of force. Optimistically, right? what do you see? So I see that for now the Taliban in power, how they progress, how hmm. they re-engage with the West, hmm. how that develops. Because see, they have they have gone through a phase of struggle hmm. to a phase of now governance. Hmm. So they have to deliver. You know, the war is over now, right? It is. First, when you are in a conflict, people have two sides or multiple sides. They are busy fighting each other. Yes, but now you are now the fight the is over. Yeah. So they have to to address questions of economy. Hmm. Political 
social issues hmm. and governance place a governance model yes which will work hmm. right i hear that the governance model will be more like iran okay because i don't see talk of a democracy a theocratic society yeah hmm. so because that's what sounds logical hmm. because you know they have come to power based on that yes so so let's see if the, uh, if the west understand i will not hazard a guess of the next 10 years mm. but there are certain fundamental uh, cha- means things the taliban has to do mm. to uh, to say that how they will and prove that they can govern it mm. you know with 20 or terrorist things operating mm. within the country with a ch- challenge even from iskp mm-hmm. the rest are not challenging them but iskp is mm. so so taliban has to still settle down and build these you know uh, build a uh, uh, how should i put it uh, governance structure and and functioning mm. uh, you know because right now they went through a mode of crisis sanctions this and that and it was on a day to day survival mode mm. putting in a new system in place but mm. they still have to settle down and build it completely yeah they're transi- tra- they're transitioning from fighters to governors to to people yeah. who govern it's so, not an easy transition no and they yeah. need capacity so yes. a lot of people who could not exit as i hear hmm. who were kept sort of trained or in india or wherever hmm. people who during the previous regime are working with them they've been absorbed into the yeah. thing okay that's good so it all it's a number of factors what their how they want to go and then the western tolerance and everyone's tolerance of allowing that to happen hmm so i i i i don't know I means frankly hmm. means because it's it's a two way factor yes it's their own internal dynamics and the external forces external yeah yes. external is is pretty important it's pretty important especially for afghanistan yes yeah, it's it's the west how tolerant they are frankly hmm. you know if they side step certain issues hmm. Hmm. they talk about in media but yeah you know are they ready to compromise right right are the mm. people of afghanistan happy with the kind of rule the taliban have imposed or is, i mean let's like talk I about said, what i hear about is economic mm. see the two factors they were in a liberal society mm. which has been clamped down on yes. and there is economic hardship hmm but there was anyway there economic hardship right not to that extent okay so there are two factors in mm. the cities they had because of aid money flew in there the okay. villages still survived huh. so it's it's like you know when we say india and bharat means oh, that's something <laughs> okay that context you know. right okay so the mainstream may have not been that much affected because the village is still living in culturally economically in the same mold they were earlier hmm. but yes cities this uh, in other areas people were used to a different lifestyle hmm. and so that's kind of change and huh? had better economic opportunities hmm. employment opportunities so hmm. that has changed right All right. Thank you so much for a wonderful discussion. My pleasure. Overview of this. I hope things get better for Afghanistan. Right. We hope so. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. If you enjoyed this clip, the full conversation is available on YouTube, and the link is in the description below. Please go check it out. Thank you.